So now that we've learned about G and the multiple intelligences theory of Gardner, we're going to finish up the last two theories today on intelligence, and that's the triarchic theory and emotional intelligence. So triarchic theory is um, from a guy named Bob Sternberg, and he actually agreed with Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences, but he thought that nine was too many. So what he did was he tried to simplify it down into just three, which is why we call it the triarchic theory of intelligence. Um, and sometimes it's nicknamed the successful theory of intelligence. And this is really the most commonly accepted theory in of what intelligence is today and how we measure it. But his three parts of intelligence are analytical intelligence. So this is like your school smarts and how good you are at solving, you know, logical problems, math problems. Then you have a creative intelligence, which is how good are you at generating new ideas or, you know, if you're... Um, you have a problem and you can't find the solution, can you come up with a, another way of doing it? And then practical intelligence. So this is just your street smarts. And it's nicknamed the successful intelligence because Sternberg believes that these are the three things that you need to be successful and therefore these are the things you need to be intelligent. So here's an example of Alice. She's a good student, always getting good grades, until she reached graduate school. When she was required to come up with original ideas, she began to fall behind. So Alice is really strong in analytical intelligence, but when it comes to creating things, she really struggles with that. And so she's not having success because she's lacking that creative, creative intelligence. And then Barbara, not a good student, so low analytical intelligence, but she's brimming over with ideas for research. So she has that creativity piece. And then Celia is neither a good student nor creative student, but she's street smart. She knows how to play the game and how to get things done. And as our next theorist will say, um, Goldman with his emotional intelligence, um, this street smarts is the most important thing of all. So that's really all triarchic theory is. It's just kind of boiling down Gardner into three things um, rather than nine. Critics of this theory say that even though they're three different things, analytical, practical, and creative, there's still a G that overlaps them. So if someone's really creative, they tend to be really, they tend to be analytical as well, or they t tend to be very practical as well. So um, that's really the only critic, critical, um, information on this theory. Our fourth and final theory of intelligence is emotional intelligence. And this was proposed by people um, a while ago, but Daniel Goleman has really taken a hold of this theory and kind of ran with it. And this looks at intelligence in a really different way, not necessarily just your cognitive ability, but more so your ability to relate to yourself and others. So this is dominated by the interpersonal and intrapersonal intelligences of Howard Gardner. And Goldman says that this is way more important than IQ and even testing for intelligence because your IQ does not predict your success in life. You could have a super high IQ, but that doesn't mean you're going to be any better off than anybody else with a lower IQ. In fact, the correlation coefficient between your IQ score and your success further down in life is 0 0.02. So that's about as close to zero as you can get. What does predict success in life is your EQ or how emotionally intelligent you are. So Goldman got into this actually from studying Google. And if you look at this graph here, you've got IQ on the y-axis and EQ on the x-axis. And imagine that all these little blue dots are people. And so some have varying abilities of IQ, high IQ, low EQ, high EQ, uh, low IQ, and then you've got people in the middle. Um, but the problem is, is when at Google, like they hire people with very high IQs. And so if you're at Google, you're above that that black line. Everybody has a high IQ. So how do you separate yourself? How do you stand out from the average? And this is called the floor effect. So you guys actually might even experience this in college where now you might be considered one of the smartest people at Bethel, most intelligent, you're really successful, right? You stand out from the rest of your peers. But when you get to college and you're in a class with everybody who's got the same ACT score as you, everybody who's been top 10% of their class, you know, now there's not so much that's separating you from everybody else. And this is what's called the floor effect. And so Goldman proposes that when in this situation, the only thing that can separate you is your level of emotional intelligence. So these people over here, he would posit, would be more successful than the people that are over here. And so if high IQ gets you into the game, what's going to separate you once you're there? And so Goldman went around and he surveyed a bunch of the top CEOs of the top corporations in the, comp in the, in the world. And he asked them, you know, what's the difference between your average employees and your star employees who all have these high cognitive abilities? And so the company said the number one distinguisher between average and um, unique was grit. So this is your desire to achieve and your desire to make things around you better. 
Um, set challenging goals for yourself. You have high intrinsic motivation. When things get tough, you persevere and you don't give up. Um, so they're looking for people who are gritty. You don't have to have high IQ to be gritty, but you do have to have high grit to be successful. The second thing was impact and influence. You as a person, can you impact and influence other people? Are you a leader? Can you lead other people? I mean, that is invaluable things that, you know, you can have a high IQ, but work terribly with people. They don't want people like that. They want people who can influence others. They want people who can think conceptually. So can they recognize patterns? Um, what can they do that will make a difference in what the current pattern of things is? Number four was their level of analysis. Can you anticipate obstacles? Can you plan ahead? So this is a, a cognitive skill. The fifth thing was autonomy. Can you work by yourself? Do you always have to be told what to do? Can, you, um, can I trust you that when there's a problem, you're going to take care of it and I don't have to worry about it? I mean, that's not a cognitive thing. That's, that's a, an emotional intelligence thing. And then the last one was self-confidence. You know, do you have the ability to be confident in yourself to get things done? Do you trust yourself? Do you need someone constantly reassuring you because that takes energy? And so from this, this survey, these are the top six things that companies said they wanted. And what Goldman said was interesting is that four out of the six are all EQ. He did say, for sure, conceptual thinking and analysis are definitely IQ-related and more cognitively based. But one, two, five, and six have nothing to do with your cognitive ability. They're more of your emotional intelligence. And Goldman's evidence for his emotional intelligence was something called the amygdala hijack, also known as the HPA axis. And the HPA axis stands for the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And so when you get stressed, when you're in a big fight or flight sympathetic response, your hypothalamus is controlling your pituitary, which is telling your adre adrenal glands to release adrenaline, epinephrine, norepinephrine. And that those hormones change the way that your brain prioritizes information. And when you have an amygdala hijack situation, smart people can do really dumb things. Um, and so this is like why if you had tried to memorize a speech or something, but then you get up in front of a class um, and you forget everything. That's because you're in that amygdala hijack. It's just you know, what do I need right now to survive? I don't need to remember that speech. I just need to be able to be up here without, you know, peeing myself. Um, that's an example of the amygdala hijack. So what happens is the information gets sent to your prefrontal cortex, because this is where all your decision making is. And you actually have a left section and then a right section of the prefrontal cortex. What they found is that when you are in a stable mood, the left prefrontal, the left prefrontal cortex is, is um, stronger, it's, it's more stable. But when you are in an amygdala hijack, it hijacks the right prefrontal cortex. And Goldman has found through brain scans that every single one of us has a resting ratio of left to right prefrontal cortex activity. And so those of us that have high left prefrontal cortex activity tend to be emotionally stable. Um, when things get tough, we tend not to lose our cool. But people who have that um, high activity on the right prefrontal cortex um, tend to be clinically depressed, they're really anxious, or when things get tough, they tend to respond in really extreme ways or dramatic ways. And so he said that through the brain's plasticity, we can change the way that our brain responds to this stuff, and we can gain emotional intelligence, that we can um, create emotional intelligence in us. And he said the best way to do that is through meditating and intentionally calming your brain down um, so that you can become more emotionally intelligent. And he's found that people that have a higher level of EQ have higher activity in that left prefrontal cortex, giving evidence that it is something that can be neurologically measured. So those are the four theories of intelligence. Uh, general for Soji, Sturman, hierarchic theory for Sternberg, multiple intelligences with Gardner, and then Goleman's emotional intelligence. So tomorrow we'll talk a little bit about which one's actually right and which one you think is, is um, applicable to your life, and we'll go on from there. So, see you tomorrow.